Hello, I've got a Gorilla Boy bag today, the Simeon. Uh, this is their original Simeon bag. They've now come out with a brand new model just recently. This bag retailed for $249 when my friend bought it. I gotta thank Brandon for letting me borrow this bag so I can do a review on it. There still are some of these for sale. I just checked the website uh, right before starting recording this video and Gorilla Boys got these on sale for $149 right now, this older version. And I think their new version is at the same retail price that this was when Brandon bought it at $249. This bag, I have been just holding it for a while. I was quite conflicted about making this review and really had trouble had trouble seeing a whole lot of uh, value in this bag I guess I'll say uh, I'm pretty picky uh, about these bags if you've watched any of my other reviews you can tell I don't ha hand out a whole lot of free compliments and do a bunch of cheerleading which you see if you watch a lot of bag reviews people are super excited about their brand new bags and just kind of gush on them and and that's great but it doesn't help you guys make the hard decision about what bag to buy so i i think that's probably why you're watching some of my videos is you've enjoyed the criticism i put towards these bags but uh usually i have high expectations when i get a bag and then I'm sad to find that my expectations were too high and I'm disappointed in a bag and then I have to kind of rebuild what my expectations are. And usually that comes from starting to understand what I think the designer had in mind when they put the bag together. And that process didn't really work for me on this bag. Uh, even when I really got to the point that I tried to understand how they designed it, I still was just left a little bit disappointed. Um, it's just not my favorite bag. It's uh, it's on the heavy end of the spectrum. This bag empty is at 2.77 kilos. That put us right there with the Voodoo ST3, which is 2.7. Pound Octothorpe is 1.84. Grip AX15 is 1.75. So you can see once we get to that Octothorpe, um, the Carlton is at 1.73. So kind of that Octothorpe, the Grip AX, and the Carlton, you know, those are also some pretty big bags. And, and this bag is sitting at a full kilo heavier than those. You know, a lot of that has to do with the uh, um, PVC frame. This has a plastic frame in there. I know that's some of the weight. When I'm considering how heavy this bag is, I try to keep in mind how heavy a stool is. If I've got a really nice three-leg kind of tournament style stool, one of the most popular styles you'll see out there, and that stool weighs 0.73 kilos. So that almost makes up for the extra kilo that this bag is heavier over some of those other larger bags. So, you know, that kind of helps get over the weight of it, right? Um, however, you know, with those other bags, I can decide whether to carry the stool with me or not. When I'm carrying this, I'm just stuck with the weight. And I will say the ability to, to sit on this bag is simply my favorite thing about it. Um, and I really did enjoy that. I mean, when I walk out of my room into the mud area where I'm ready to put on my tennis shoes, just being able to set this bag on the ground and sit on it when I put my tennis shoes on before leaving the house is pretty sweet. Um, it's a, a really nice height for me. It feels super comfortable to sit on. The real thick padding that they've got on top of here is just unbeatable. I was never sad to have this chair with me when I was out on the course. I think they did a great job designing a comfortable seat. Unfortunately, I really feel like they designed a seat that also holds discs. And I just don't really think that was the best way to go about it. Uh, I think that it should have been a bag first. First, it should have been designed to carry discs and for storage for disc golf products. And then bring the seat in second. And I just don't think that's what, that's just not what happened. This is, a, you know, it's just a seat first. 
Um, there, there aren't a whole lot of other bags that we can compare it against in that realm that are have the built-in seat. The, uh, what do they call it, the Ridge V2, I think, is a bag out right now that you can also sit on. I have seen it in person just a little bit. I think they look super cool. I'd like to test one. Maybe it'll get, you know, I will order one soon. That really looks to me like they designed it as a disc golf bag first. And, and then they made it be a seat as well. So you know, I kind of got that grumpiness out of the way. I'll, I'll you know, try not to be unfair to this bag at all, but I'm also gonna be honest with you guys about how it feels to me. So I haven't been carrying this bag for the last few weeks. I did use it for quite a few rounds and then I set it aside and I've been carrying another bag for the last little bit so I had to try to remember exactly how I'd set everything up and you know put some extra discs in here so I could show it to you all. If we just start with the fabric I can say that they've done a really nice job. This is very high quality fabric. I don't think you're gonna wear through this thing. You'd, you'd really be hard pressed. It is a hard bottom bag, no feet on it. Uh, so you are setting your fabric right on the ground. It is very sturdy. It's got the PVC frame down there, so it, f it feels like a bag that you know has a rigid, uh, like the grip bags have those hard plastic runners on the bottom. This has a similar feel. It's a wide footprint. It's not easy to tip over if you're on flat ground at all. You know, if you're setting it down on some steep hills or whatever, then, then yeah, you, you, you may have some issues there. One thing that Brandon told me b before he gave me the bag is that he was cons concerned about his putters warping, and he pulled one out and showed me even. So I paid close attention to that, and sure enough, I wasn't comfortable leaving my putters in this bag. They, they get a fair bit of pressure on them when they're in those side pockets, and I felt that if I left my putters in there for even a day or two that I was likely to, to start having a little bit of warp show up on my putters. Uh, it, especially if I had these side pockets very full, which I, I don't right now, so there's not a whole lot pushing on them. But when you do put your disc in a putter in that uh, one of the putter sleeves, that's pushing straight into the side pocket. So if you have much in the side pocket, then it is going to be pushing on your pushing on your disc. So it's a little bit of a funky thing, uh, you know, especially if you're leaving your bag in the, your car in the summertime. And especially if you have soft putters, you may notice that, that they're warping. Um, so I had the habit of taking my two putters out and I set them on top of the bag. And that's how it would be when it was in, in my house. And then before I'd leave, I'd, I'd stick those putters back in there. And I tried it both ways, you know, both putting the lid of the putter against the bag and putting the lid of the putter against that pocket. And either way, it's just pushing against, you know, a little bit of funky stuff. So that's something to beware, beware of. The main compartment in here is a little bit odd. I kind of fought with it to try to get mid-ranges in there, and it was enough of a pain for me that I stopped, and I just used that center storage for my distance drivers and fairways in stacks of four. And they fit well at that, but that then left me using one of these side pockets to, to put all my mids in, and discs do fit great in the side pocket. That's four mids comfortably down there, and I could use the other side for that as well. But you're really eating into some of your main storage when, when you do that, so you've really got to decide how many, how many discs you want to carry. If you're trying to put mids up in the main compartment, you've got to look out for the PVC. Like you can see on this side here, there's a piece of PVC that uh, runs horizontally, and that will fight with the width of a disc. So I, I can't, you know, I can't push a disc in there. I had to pop it up over the PVC, and it's, and it's just wedged, right? 
you can see there's there's just no it's it's not the right it's not the right width so I've got to get under or over that also comes into play if you're trying to use this bottom compartment for disk storage you can see another horizontal piece of PVC in there so if I'm trying to put a disk in it's just gonna it's gonna wedge unless I get it over under or crooked in that case so we got a you know it's just a little bit a little bit off you can see I can get three mids in there that are all under that piece of PVC and if I try to get a, a fourth then then I'm I'm really starting to fight with it you can see how it's pushing pushing my disc on an angle so I feel like you can use any of those sections for either four drivers or for three for three mids you can see how those three mids eat up about the same amount of space that four drivers did So when I was carrying this bag, uh, I was 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 discs, um, utilizing four in the side pocket. So you're really in that 14, I'd say 14 to 18 disc capacity range with this bag. You certainly can push into the low 20s if you're willing to utilize both of the side pockets to store discs. And you know you can get one or you know maybe two or something crooked on, in this very bottom pocket if you if you wanted to. One thing I did also really like about this bag is that they put a haul loop uh, off center. They moved it way way forward here above the seat, and that was a complaint I really didn't like ab about the Fossa bag that I've got back here is that the, their haul loop is all the way back here and on a heavier bag when you pick it up here you know the whole bag just wants to pivot forward and, and tilt over re really hard so having that haul loop move forward so much lets you pick the bag up almost vertically which which is really nice i do wish that they actually still had an, a normal haul loop on here so that I could lift from both of those points and I'd really have great control of that as I'm you know leaning into my truck to set it in the back seat um, that would give me exactly the control over the bag with a double haul loop I've seen pictures of their new version it looks like they've deleted this which is really unfortunate uh, and they've just gone with a, a single haul loop back here so I anticipate their bag to be tipping quite awkwardly their newer version when you're lifting it in that way they went to s some effort on the back of this bag to give you control over where the padding goes. And that's one of the, the padding is one of the first things you'll notice about this bag if you pick one up or get to see it in person. It has a ridiculously thick padding on these straps. It is by far the thickest padding of any bag that I've measured. This was 28 millimeters, uh, the, the thickness of the padding on these straps, compared to uh, like the Octothorpe, which is second place for thickest padding, was at 19 millimeters. Um, it's, they've got so much padding on, on these straps. And it is a very fluffy padding unlike like the Octothorpe for example the Octothorpe is pretty stiff padding it takes some effort to squish it down and, and this padding is just super uh, super lightweight you can just crush it without a without any any problem at all you can you can squish that stuff it feels like you're throwing a pillow over your shoulder it's it's ex very very comfortable with that much padding and they've also gone with that thick of padding uh, on these pieces here that press up against your back and these are velcroed on so you can pull that off and move it up or down and velcro it back in place and you can also do that with the with the bottom piece here you can pull that velcro off and move it up or down I only played with moving those a little bit I tried moving this bottom one down it, really low because Whoops, I'm making a mess now. Uh, 
there is a piece of PVC right here in this corner. And even with that really thick padding on there, it still uh, compressed the padding without much problem. And then I was feeling that piece of PVC riding on my lower back. So I remember, I think the first round that I was carrying it, I even took that off and I overhung it. I ran it like, you know, lower than it ever should be and to try to get it to eliminate the feeling of that PVC pushing on my back. Even with how thick that padding is, because of the weight of the bag and the width of the bag, it still carries a little bit funny. Like, I've not noticed this with any other bag other than maybe that the big blue fossa in the background but when i have this on my back i feel like the the backs of my arms are hitting the bag it's, you know with these big cup holders out here in these pockets it just it, i mean it feels like i'm i don't know carrying a bookshelf or something just like this big oversized box on my bag both both this and the and this the big fossa had that similar feeling so you know not necessarily the best the best feeling bag to carry around, um, despite the comfortable straps. One of the maybe simplest things, biggest oversights on this bag is the zippers on the side pockets. They are put on upside down. I don't think there's any nicer way to say it than that. Uh, these zip from the bottom down which means, like on this one where I've got four discs in here, and I like to keep a towel pretty accessible, so I'll put a towel right in there with those discs, and now i got to worry that that towel is going to fall out as soon as I pick the bag up. So what would I like to do? I'd like to grab that zipper and pull it up about four inches. Pull it up right about to here. That way I can still access my towel, no problem, uh, without having to touch the zipper. But because their zipper's put on backwards, I have to start from the top, zip it around this corner, and, and then close it all the way. Um, this is such a silly thing. I mean, the next zipper up on their little side pocket, they got that one right. That one zips the correct direction, so if I want to leave it you know, partially open, uh, I can do that. But the main zipper, they just straight up made a mistake and put it on upside down. I Like, okay, so the only argument I can make from their perspective is, oh, well, we're worried that gravity is going to pull our zipper unzipped. And that just doesn't make sense because even on this next zipper right here, which is a valuables zipper, so that would be even more important not to have it unzipped when you don't want to. They've put it on that direction. Plus, it, if we look at nearly every other bag out there, they're all you know, pulling from the bottom and coming up. Uh, there's like one zipper or something on that fossa bag that for whatever reason they did the same thing and put it on backwards. But that <clears throat> that's such a simple thing and it becomes so frustrating. Um, it's just a little bit hard to get past. But <clears throat> inside these uh, main pouches, they have a another pocket on the inside um, right right here and that pocket should be right here up higher I don't know why they put it down there because even with like the putter that's sliding in here that putter overlaps with the height of that pocket and interferes with getting things in and out of it if you put discs in there you've rendered that pocket useless and like if I look at this other side where I've just put a jacket in there, that's the same thing. Even just putting a jacket in there, well, it kind of renders that pocket useless. It's really hard to get in there, um, especially with a, a disc. That disc wants to catch my finger, so I must have to pull my putter out first, and then I can slide my hand in there. Um, that pocket really should just be up higher. I would be, I'd actually use it, I think, if it was up higher, but where they're at now, I didn't use them at all because I've always, you know, got a jacket or discs or extra beverages or whatever, you know, there's there's almost always going to be something in the bottom of that pocket that's going to block you uh, from, from getting into that little interior extra side pouch. 
they have given you all the pencil storage you could ever need and I put a silly amount of pencils in here just so it was easy for you guys to view the pockets that they've sewn um, that's great that's awesome they, you know that's an easy thing to add on and there's no reason not to have too many pencil pockets you know you don't have to use them all of course you, you know pick which side of the bag you want to use and put a few in there uh, they're the perfect height they've even taken one of the three uh, on each side and sewn a shorter bottom on it to make them stick higher. Like that's a really, really nice idea. It's a little attention to detail that they did there. That's super cool. Um, it handles pencils really well. I struggled a little bit with this bag where to keep my cell phone and it ended up living in that pocket right there. It's a great fit for it. My, my cell phone's like large size, not extra large or anything like that, but it's a little bit bigger of one and it won't fit in their cornered zippered pockets here. That's, I've got my wallet in there right now. Um, so then I, without it fitting in here, I pretty much only had two options. I had to go to the exterior or I could bring it into this extra valuables pocket that they've got sitting above the discs in here. and. It does fit in there uh, okay. It's a, My phone's just a little bit large for that, uh, but I can get it in sideways or crooked and, and get the zipper closed. But that pocket's a little bit hard to see. Not so much for me right now, because I'm standing up, but even to get in there, I gotta you know bend way over or tilt the bag back so that I can see this pocket. And that's even worse if I'm on the disc golf course because I don't have a table to set the bag on. So I'm setting the bag on the ground, tilting it back on a 45, and then looking into that pocket. And my cell phone's something that comes out multiple times per round, maybe every single hole. I do a fair bit of U disc stuff, so uh, I'm, I'm looking at the phone quite a bit. So I want it to be fairly easily accessible. I don't necessarily want to zip it closed and zip it back open every single time. And there's just a little bit too big of a chance that if I have my cell phone in that pocket that it's going to go flying out when I pick my bag up. So I became like almost paranoid. I just wouldn't use that pocket, right? I'm like, well, I don't want to have to check if it's constantly, did I zip it closed or not? Is my phone about to fall out? How many holes has it been since I checked that, you know? So if anything, that's maybe more of like wallets and keys, right? Uh, you just put it in at the beginning of the round, zip it closed, and you don't have to think about it again. But then you really are out of ideas to store your cell phone. Um, this fits well. It's easy to get access. I can just sit down on the bag and grab it. The uh, only problem really is that it's down on that foot height where somebody can kick my bag, me included, if I'm you know stumbling backwards or you know, just not paying attention where my bag is, and I kind of hate having my cell phone in a spot that can get kicked. Also, of course, is no rain protection there, so I've got to do something different if it if it starts to rain. But it it does fit super super well. I did like uh, using that spot for my cell phone. They also sewed in a little pass through on the top of these side pockets so that you can put the nozzle for a water bladder through there. I did utilize that. I carried a water bladder in this. They've also got a pocket, I don't know what to call it, a little sewn gap here uh, for an umbrella. And then you've got a vel Velcro piece to secure it up, up high. I carried an umbrella for one round in this and it fit great. I thought that having it there I might really feel it against my back, uh, but I didn't. This other, The other padding that they've got in here makes the bag stand out far enough that I just didn't feel the umbrella. It really wasn't a hindrance at all. Even carrying it with the umbrella open, uh, I, I did feel that the um, my umbrella at least was a little bit too short, it was too low. I would have liked a little bit taller umbrella to get around that. One other thing I noticed on this, and it's unique to this bag, is the type of webbing that they've used on the straps. And I might have to get this kind of close for you guys to see. I don't have my autofocus set on, so if I get too close, it'll it'll come out of focus. But this 
webbing is very has a very large weave to it. Let me compare it to here. I've got a grip bag. Uh, I've got a grip bag right here as well. Let me pull that strap out a little bit. So if you look at those two pieces of webbing together, you can see that you, you know you're getting different reflection off the black webbing because of how much of a wider weave it is. Um, that means that it's you know you can feel it with your finger just rubbing it. Uh, this tan one is much smoother and the black is rough. Uh, it's certainly extremely durable. Not that webbing on any other bag has been a problem, but when they go with that wide of a weave, it becomes very difficult to get the strap to pull through uh, your adjustment uh, buckle here. It takes a lot of effort to get that to pull through, and that's not moving too bad but I broke it free right before doing this video. I was playing with it and I drug it back and forth a bunch of times. The first time that I tried to adjust it, it was on my back and I pulled ridiculously hard. I mean, not in the wrong way. I had the buckle open and unloaded, but the strap was just so hard to get to move through there. And it glides a whole lot easier on the other bags. So, it's not as easy to adjust this one on the fly just because of that thicker, the thicker webbing. They have made a, re a releasable buckle down here on the bottom of the strap, uh, combined with uh, a couple on the top, and and then uh, we've got vel Velcro in here, so you can completely remove that backpack strap if you if you wish. I did not have a need to play with these buckles on top, but that certainly does give you some control over how hot you want those straps to ride. And it ought to prevent, uh, it ought to prevent any tearing from the strap down here because much of the stress is, is pushed right to this upper stitching point. So if you're to have any uh, stitching problems related to, you know, picking the back up backpack up by the backpack straps it, it's going to be up here on on this corner um, that's pretty much everything I had on my list uh, I know on some of these other bags I've gone through and you know jammed them full of jackets and stuff like that to show you their maximum storage and I don't quite feel like doing that I guess but I feel like you'll also have a pretty good idea of how much this bag can carry. I've got that one small jacket in this side pocket over here. And I could fit, you know, a couple more. I can also get this jacket down into that into that center pocket. Um, so if you wanted to put, you know, snacks or whatever underneath the bottom here, you you could fit quite a bit. I think that with its current sale price at $149, it is um, it's a respectable deal at that price. I think that a lot of people would get their money worth out of it, but at the $249 price tag, I just really struggle to see how I can recommend this bag to somebody. Um, you know, I, I get it. If if you really want to be able to sit down during the round and have a comfortable seat, then this is a good option. Also, a tri-stool uh, is a good option, a camp stool. Um, I guess if you look at, you know, why do people want a seat during the round? And the answer is probably that they want to reduce fatigue over the course of multiple rounds in a tournament setting or something like that. And that's a good answer. It makes sense to want to reduce fatigue. What causes the fatigue is carrying around a heavy bag on your back, especially if it's not the most comfortable bag. And I'm not saying this isn't the most comfortable bag. It is pretty comfortable. It doesn't compete with the pound bags, but 
it's also not the same price range, so I can't, you know, that's not really a fair comparison price-wise. I could easily make the argument, though, that if you're fatigued over the course of multiple rounds, it's probably because of how much weight you're carrying. And if you're only carrying 14 to 18 discs, why not just go with a whole lot lighter bag than this? That's probably going to reduce a heck of a lot more fatigue and then still on those multiple round you know super long tournament days carry a tri-stool with you uh, and then you got the best of both worlds you've you know removed weight from your back from all the other rounds and then you can carry a little bit of extra weight just really when you think you want to take the stool with you so I'll be curious I I'll be curious to see what, if any of you are watching this review that already own this bag and really love it, and, and what your favorite things are about the bag. I guess I haven't commented on just the aesthetics of it. I think it's really an eye-catching bag. It has a very unique look. You know, you, you, you can see it from halfway across the course, right, and know what bag that is. Something about the high corners that kind of protrude from the bag just make it very unique, that tall, flat face that the bag has. That's what got me interested in the bag from the beginning was just the aesthetics of it. I think it's got a really cool look. So, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe you'd, if you like the look of it and the things that I've kind of been naysaying about it and picking on aren't that big of a deal to you, then um, go for it. I think that if... If you fall into that criteria, then you're going to be happy with your purchase. It's a high-quality bag. It's made to last a long time. So I hope uh, you got something out of this review that's useful. Um, it may not be useful for very long because I think once they s sell out of this version, they're probably gone. Um, so we won't be getting any, any more new ones out there. I may, I may end up ordering one of the new style. I, it doesn't look like they've changed many of the things that were the most frustrating to me, so that makes me kind of hesitant uh, to want to try out their new one, but I'm, I may still you know, suck it up and, and just get one to find out. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised and um, can do another review for you guys. But, um, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.